This is Kira. In elementary school, she daydreamed a lot, but wasn't very disruptive in class. She achieved good grades, and her teachers quite liked her. High school is a bit harder, but Kira is still able to manage it. Eventually, she got into a good university and was excited to have a new start. However, in university, Kira became stressed. Her grades began to drop, she constantly got her schedule mixed up, and spent hours working on projects that should have been done with a lot less time. When she is able to focus, she spends hours on end working on the same thing and often forgets to eat or take care of herself. She decides to talk to a therapist about her problems and is referred to a doctor. Her doctor diagnoses her with ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So, what is ADHD? ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is a neurodevelopmental disorder that is defined by symptoms such as inattention, impulsivity, and hyperactivity. These symptoms begin in childhood and often last throughout adulthood. There are three subtypes of ADHD, primarily inattentive, primarily hyperactive or impulsive, and primarily combination. Seven years old is the average age of diagnosis. So why was Kira diagnosed so late? Well, here are some misconceptions of ADHD in women. One common misconception is that ADHD is more prevalent in boys. In actuality, ADHD diagnoses can be more difficult to obtain for girls and women, and this is because diagnostic criteria were originally based on hyperactive boys. In the 1990s, researchers believe that ADHD was nine times more prevalent in boys than girls. Nowadays, the ratio has dropped to 2.5 times more prevalent in boys than girls. Another misconception is that ADHD symptoms present similarly in any gender. Although many people think girls are more likely to have the inattentive subtype of ADHD, this is not the case. They may show their symptoms differently, though. For example, for the hyperactive subtype, girls may be a chatterbox or more rebellious, whereas boys may be more stereotypically hyperactive and disruptive in the classroom. It has also been noted in some studies that girls and women are more likely to mask their symptoms or internalize them, but as they gain more responsibilities, it is harder to hide their symptoms. Dr. Helen Reed, a psychiatrist and ADHD lead for a large London National Health Service Trust, says that girls are far less likely to bounce around the classroom fighting with the teachers and their colleagues. A girl who did that would be so criticized by peers and other people that it is just far harder for girls to behave in that way. For example, girls may be more talkative or rebellious, but parents and teachers may not associate that with ADHD, especially because girls are expected to be more sociable than boys. Evidently, this is a case-by-case -case basis and it is important not to generalize all girls, but societal expectations of girls are important to take into consideration with ADHD. Lastly, some people may believe that ADHD symptoms are less serious in girls and women. ADHD symptoms exist on a spectrum, but this applies to all genders. Thus, girls have many of the same symptoms boys do, such as hyperactivity, problems with impulse control, and the inability to focus, along with extra symptoms. Stephen Hinshaw, a psychologist and leading researcher on ADHD in girls at University of California, Berkeley, and a Harvard scientist and psychiatrist, Joseph Biederman, looked into the overlap between ADHD and major depression in girls. These studies on ADHD symptomology and its correlation to major depression found that boys were particularly prone to bipolar disorder and psychiatric hospitalization. Girls with ADHD, however, are more prone to self-harm and suicide attempts. As a result of these misconceptions, parents and teachers often overlook ADHD symptoms in girls, downplaying their hyperactivity or not noticing their lack of attention or focus on school. As well, Gender stereotypes have a role in the underdiagnosis of girls and women, as girls may be expected to be more polite, social, or quiet, and these behaviors are not what people associate ADHD with. So, what happens when women are not diagnosed? ADHD often comes with comorbid conditions. In fact, a study has found that as many as 80% of adults with ADHD have a comorbid psychiatric disorder. This includes depression, anxiety, substance use disorders, and personality disorders. 
For those who have undiagnosed ADHD, comorbid disorders can make it harder to diagnose ADHD. This could be because their ADHD was misdiagnosed as something else, or because they have ADHD symptoms that are disguised as another disorder's symptoms, such as depression or bipolar disorder. In addition, if a woman with ADHD goes undiagnosed, that means they aren't receiving treatment. People who don't have access to treatment can be affected in different facets of their life. Let's look at how they're affected in the world of school and work. Women who go undiagnosed are more likely to get fired from their jobs, underachieve in school and work, and not complete high school, college, or university. In the realm of health, women with undiagnosed ADHD are more likely to have disordered eating or eating disorders, substance use disorders, which can be three to four times greater in people with untreated ADHD, and serious mood swings. Some other things that undiagnosed women can struggle with are failed marriages, relationship problems, driving ability as they can be more distracted or impulsive, and emotional regulation. Ari Tuckman, psychologist and author of More Attention, Less Deficit, Success Strategies for Adults with ADHD, and Linda Rogley, the founder of the AD Diva Network, says that treatment for ADHD is important if it's impacting your ability to function in life, but treatment starts with diagnosis. Rogley says, when you know what you're dealing with, you can actually change the trajectory of your life in all areas. Tuckman also mentions that There is a price paid and additional suffering from withholding a treatment that research shows is beneficial.